Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we return to talking about the ongoing conflicts between the mainstream media and President Donald J. Trump. Recently, the president has done a pretty impressive job dealing with not only the ongoing health crisis that is sweeping through our country and the world, but also Trump has had to fend off terrible and biased attacks from some of the worst liberal reporters of all time. Fortunately, Trump has held strong and he's demonstrated great patience, and he's also responded and refuted their attacks with lots of vigor and some refreshing accuracy too. But we already went over a good deal of these awkward journalists versus Trump moments in a previous video last week. Link to that below if you want to catch up. But to put it briefly here, a number of reporters have been asking pretty insane and off-base questions of the president, trying to use this bad situation in time of need as a way to gain political capital by scoring points on Trump with their wannabe got you reporting. First, we had a journalist calling Trump racist for identifying the region this pandemic started in. And then other journos ask sensational, emotion-based questions too, trying to fearmonger the public and turn them on Trump even further. Finally, there was a reporter who made up some would-be offensive phrase and then falsely claimed one of Trump's staffers said it, with no evidence to support that claim or even. This reporter didn't even have the ability to point out who even allegedly said it. And well, they couldn't point them out because it likely didn't happen. And all these silly SJW moments just show how far off base and liberal and left-leaning the mainstream media has become. But since Trump refuted and rebutted those attacking journalists so well, two big things have happened since then. First, his supporters and even many in the middle began to see how well the president was handling all this. In fact, many channels like this one right here, we laughed and had a grand old time both watching these low IQ reporters try and come up with their got you questions and also, it was great seeing Trump bat them down effortlessly and sometimes with harsh and biting lines like saying, the asker of the question is a terrible reporter right in front of everyone and right to their smug faces. But then now we've got to talk about where this story has gone since then. Now that our side has clearly won here, the left side is desperately trying to regain their ground and find a way to get at Trump and become more relevant again. And well, it appears the new solution to this is to now de-platform the president, believe it or not. Shouldn't be too surprising since liberals have been succeeding at getting conservatives kicked out of places like public events, jobs, and social media for years now. So it was only a matter of time before Trump was turned on again. But it does beg the question here, can you really de-platform a world leader like this? Let alone the President of the United States of America, the greatest and biggest power of all time. Because I really don't think they can de-platform someone like this. But gosh darn it, the left just won't give up without at least trying. More details on this story can be found in this Fox article called MSNBC's Maddow Once Trump Kept Off TV Blasts Fairy Tale News Briefings. Well, 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 I guess we shouldn't be surprised this is coming from one of the worst of the worst in the mainstream media. Rachel Maddow has also become known as one of the worst sufferers of Trump derangement syndrome there is out there. She's become so bad she's basically become a left-wing conspiracy theorist about everything related to the president at this point, including trying to pin false accusations about Russia collusion onto the guy for years, with absolutely no evidence whatsoever. Like she just wants to believe it's true, and because she hates someone, she thinks bad things are true about them. And it's funny how nut bars on the left like Maddow get huge stages and platforms like this anyway. Her still hosting a nightly show on MSNBC of all places, while also getting touted around as if she's an actual respectable reporter or journalist, when really, she should be broadcasting from a CB radio in her mother's garage or something, while wearing a tinfoil hat and everything. That's the level of seriousness Rachel deserves, but she still gets platform like she's some big deal. And needless to say, if Rachel was on the right side of politics, she would have gotten kicked off of TV, social media, and everything by now, and she'd likely be relegated to broadcasting privately on her own website or something, if that was even still an option. And now, Rachel Maddow is advocating for more conservative censorship, apparently. Even going so far as to say a sitting president doesn't deserve to be heard by his people. Pretty outrageous suggestion, so without further ado, let's see where this story goes and how they come to this conclusion. MSNBC host Rachel Maddow urged television networks not to air White House updates on the outbreak, claiming misinformation from President Trump will cost lives. I know we ought to be getting used to this kind of thing by now, but I'm not. Maddow began Friday night. President Trump today again just flat out wrong in public about this malaria drug that has gotten stuck in his mind, quite some distance from the facts. The liberal primetime host was referring to Trump's claim Friday that the drug they're hoping to use is effective. But Dr. Anthony Fauci of the White House Task Force quickly walked back the claim, saying it had not
not gone through a clinical trial, and how the FDA previously stated the drug had not been approved to combat it. Man, talk about a party pooper, huh? I mean, it's one thing to choose not to air the president's press conference on your own channel or show, but then Maddow has to be a real Karen and suggest everyone stop playing them altogether. What a joker. And talk about bad reporting and colluding in an obvious and open way. Rachel is basically saying the media is biased against Trump and conservatives, even suggesting a way for them all to band together against us as if that's not a bad thing, when really it is. Reporters shouldn't be biased like this. And then they again try and blame this problem and loss of life on the president too. But Trump didn't cause this outbreak though. A Far East nation did. And Trump isn't causing more panic either. The press are the ones doing that now. And I think them saying our duly elected leader is causing more deaths like this, which isn't true. Well, that's just them making their fear mongering even worse. In one of the most shallow and untrue ways possible. Reminds me of a villain from a cheesy action movie, really. In those flicks, the bad guy always tries to put the blame on the hero. For example, let's say the villain kidnapped a bunch of people in this movie and then they threaten to start taking them out one by one if they don't get their ransom money. Then the villain will always say something like, these deaths are on you now or this blood is on your hands. And while this is a fun way to raise tensions in an action movie, but it also makes no sense and it makes me think and say, hey, wait a minute, you're the one killing the people here so their deaths aren't on the person that's trying to save them. We can see through that emotional ploy. And well, in this real world situation, back to Rachel Maddow and while it's a bit different, but I do think it's related and you guys get the point here. Here, Rachel Maddow and the mainstream media are these sorts of mustache twirling villains, trying to blame the deaths and the panic they're partially causing on the president who is really the one person trying to help. And as for the drug mentioned here, well, while it's good to keep a level head about the effectiveness of anti-malarial drugs like this, but also you can still have hope for their success in the future while we're waiting for results to come in. And this doom and gloom attitude touted by journalists trying to dunk on the president clearly helps absolutely no one and only exacerbates the panic, which is their goal. I say we should have the courage and audacity to hope like the president does and pray for the best while we can. Who knows? Things could go well for this treatment too. There have already been rumors and reports of success using it, specifically with an actor named Daniel Day Kim, who recently came out saying he successfully treated himself with this anti-malarial drug. So while the press and journals want the president to fail so bad that they're hoping for more people to die, really, we all should be leaving these biased politics aside and hoping that we can all do better and get treated and survive and thrive in the future. But the president loves saying things like, you know, there's a drug we've got and it's very effective. It's approved already. Everybody's going to get it. He loves saying things like that because that would be a lovely thing to be able to tell people. Unless, of course, that's not true, in which case telling people a fairy tale like that is cruel and harmful and needlessly diverting and wildly irresponsible from anyone in any leadership role, Maddow said. It's actually wildly irresponsible if someone said that to you from a bar stool, if any of us could go to bars anymore. But to get that from somebody at the presidential podium, nevertheless, he keeps doing it. Geez, can this lady clutch her pearls any harder? And God forbid the president try and give his country some hope in this desperate time of need. Come on. If he wasn't saying something like this, then they would be saying he's hopeless and pessimistic and too negative. So let's not play this game here, Rachel. Don't act like you're some reasonable, non-biased reporter who can cast judgment on this president in a legitimate and effective way. Yeah, right. Maddow is a biased liberal hack who not only vehemently supported the president's opposition in the last election, but also, Rachel broke down in tears crying like a big baby when her side lost in 2016. And now she wants to act like she can effectively judge this president, his mannerisms and delivery in any sort of fair or meaningful way? Please, you're a fake news peddling whack job who shouldn't be trusted as a source of information on anything, let alone should you be able to judge someone you clearly publicly hate so much that he's made you cry live on the air multiple times. In addition, their complaints about this suggested malaria medication to be used as a treatment for this new illness, well, as time goes on, the left is shown to be more and more wrong on this question too. Not only did we have that successful example we mentioned before, but also, now the governor of New York, a liberal himself, he's saying they will start implementing these very trial drugs that Maddow is railing against now. New York even acquired hundreds of thousands of the pills directly from the U.S. government in an effort to help combat this new disease. So it sounds to me like this treatment is something to consider seriously then. And I highly doubt the press will be accusing this liberal New York governor of giving his people false hope, like the weak attack they levied at our President Trump. Finally, let's talk about this newfound treatment a bit more. From my understanding, which is very minimal, I'm not a doctor or anything, but they're actually not using anything technically 
relatively new here. These treatments have been around for a while for another disease called malaria. And the treatment for malaria also happens to help people with the new issue as well. So with that said, it's not like the president or anyone is suggesting some dangerously deadly and possibly fatal new treatment that's off the wall or something. Like how the press would have you believe. Maddow directly says people could die from this, but really we're talking about people taking a pretty common medicine that's already been established to help with malaria. And they're hoping it will help with this new thing too, which has shown to be true in some cases. And unless you're allergic to the medication or something, taking something as simple as a malaria pill is pretty common and harmless. And it's something many Americans do already, especially when getting ready to visit places possibly affected by malaria across the globe. Finally, let's wrap things up by looking at a clip of Rachel herself, doing her best to sensationalize and make this Trump story out to be a big deal when really it's not. It's just a big deal for her because she's a big crybaby. Check this clip out. I know we ought to be getting used to this kind of thing by now, but I'm not. Well, I'm having trouble getting used to you smacking your mouth before you talk and turning your head and blinking dramatically 10 times in a row. That's rather disturbing to watch. All because Trump suggested there might be a solution to help people during this worldwide pandemic? Oh, what a monster that man must be. How dare Trump try and help people and give us hope and promote a now potentially very effective fix that's so promising the state of New York just ordered hundreds of thousands of pills of it, indicating this is highly worth it for people to try, despite Maddow trying to shirk us away from it for political reasons. Trump announced that Google was developing a website to help people decide if they needed testing and where they could go to get it. It was going to be, be very quickly done, he said, unlike websites of the past. Turns out, of course, that that website is still in the early stages of development, and currently it's only being tested in one part of California, and it's not even really working just for that. Oh my God, can this lady get any more bitter or whiny? It's obvious she wants the president to fail and be wrong, even if that means our country and people are suffering because of it. So what if a website is taking longer than they hoped to make? Deadlines don't always get met, especially in these kinds of crises. And President Trump has a million other real things to worry about too. I also highly doubt Trump or his staff are the actual ones programming websites like this by hand. So if it's taking longer, that delay is obviously on Google's hands here. Next, Maddow complains that Navy ships with medical support aren't coming as fast as Trump promised. And I think we can all see where this is going. Rachel's a little sad, pathetic liberal and Trump hater who's mired with Trump derangement syndrome so bad, she sounds like she's about to cry again. And besides crying and blinking a lot and turning her head and smacking her lips and being a sensational hack, well, Rachel also finds it necessary to nitpick and complain about every little thing and try and turn this tragedy and disaster back on Trump, who, again, is the only guy out there actually trying to help us. Does the mainstream media really expect us to think they actually care about helping here? Because all I see is them being opportunists who see this bad situation as a way for them to get points and ratings and to make more money. Maddow doesn't care about this problem or this country or our people or the world. Not at all. She's just some over-the-hill, washed-up fake news reporter who's using her bully pulpit to rail against someone in public she doesn't like and has a personal vision vendetta against. What do you guys think? Should Trump be taken off television like how Rachel says? Because I think, quite frankly, failing channels like MSNBC could really use the ratings the president provides. And even if they keep Trump's press conferences off the air, the president is still all these losers talk about anyway, so what even is the point in trying to censor him when their whole shows are devoted to talking about him? Comment your thoughts on everything below, and thanks for watching No Bullshit. Hit that like button to help support this channel, and we'll see y'all next time.